first, I'd like to bring on the stage Corinna Zieber um, to make a presentation of her own uh, publishing company on audiobooks. Corinna Zieber is the publisher and owner of the audiobook company. Uh, in 1994, Dr. Corinna Zimber founded a mail order bookstore for audiobooks called Audiobook in Freiburg. A little later, the publishing work was added. It all started with the audiobook Ancient Rome and its surroundings, a timeless title that reveals the secret passion of the company founder, classical archaeology. In the meantime, the publishing program of audiobook has developed steadily. Over 600 titles are now available. Corinna, uh, the microphone is yours, please. Thank you for having me, Nopi, and good morning, everyone, Kalimera. Uh, I'm going to Media 3's European literature begins with Homer's Iliad. And this epic begins with the words Menin Aedetea, Piliadiu Achilleos. Sorry, please excuse my horrible German accent. Um, Homer, Homer thus begins with the imperative sing, not with the imperative write. And this fits well in with the genesis of early Greek epics as a whole. Oral narrative traditions form the basis for this, as you all know. A few centuries later, it is very similar with the Arabian tales of the Thousand and One Nights, or the fairy tale collection of the brothers Grimm. All these stories were passed on orally. And even then, the listeners were by no means just children. On the contrary, telling off and listening to stories is part of human nature. With regard to current audiobooks, there is, of course, still a large market for children's titles. Since my publishing house is specialized in titles for adults, I limit myself to the audiobooks for adults. The target, target group for modern audiobooks is really broad men and women of all ages and educational backgrounds are included. After all, audiobooks offer something for every taste, from poetry to comedy, from fantasy to thriller. Every genre can be realized as an audiobook. Two examples from my own publishing house may illustrate this. We published the thriller Chemistry of Death by the British author Simon Beckett in 2007, and have since sold over 200,000 copies as a physical audiobook, that is on compact disc, also CD. It is an absolute top seller in our program and has now established itself as a top title in the digital market as well. In recent years, we have generated revenues from over 90,000 downloaded or streamed audiobooks. An example from a completely different genre is Stephen Hawking's book, The Great Design from 2010, in which he describes the beginnings of the universe. It is therefore about a topic that is difficult to understand. Nevertheless, the reading has already sold 16,000 copies on CD and 25,000 audiobooks on download and streaming. What I want to say is this, you can reach any target group with audiobooks, really everyone. This has been the case in the past and will be even more so in the future. My confidence for the future is based on the fact that the technical development of the last few years have provided us with completely new sales opportunities. In the past, audiobooks were only available on media such as cassettes or compact discs. These media require 
playback devices, which are usually permanently installed in a car or at home. Anyone who was not a customer of a mail order company had to go to a bookshop to buy an audiobook. This option is still available, of course. Many customers in Germany still buy CDs. However, the physical trade is increasingly facing competition from internet offers. The reason for this is, simple, is a simple one. Today, audiobooks can be played on smartphone or tablet, that is, on mobile devices. Whether driving a car or jogging, ironing or traveling, audiobooks can be listened to anytime and anywhere, thanks to modern technology. Nearly 40 years ago, the Fraunhofer Institute in Erlangen succeeded in compressing digital audio files. This format, called MP3, is still used today. From Apple's first iPod to the latest version of a smartphone, all devices use MP3 files. These files are relatively small and can therefore be easily uploaded and downloaded. This makes them idle for mobile devices. But let's take another step back. How has the audiobook market in Germany developed in recent years? Can anything be deduced from this for other markets? In 1994, several large publishing houses, as Surkamp, Kletkotta, Hansa and others, merged to form an audiobook publishing house called Der Hörverlag. They wanted to develop the, exciting, the existing and exciting audiobook market together and gave the Hörverlag top licenses as Umberto Eco's Name of the Rose or Jürgen Garda's Sophie's World. Later, Harry Potter was added. The bestseller titles were often cast with top narrators. In many cases, these were not famous film actors, but voiceover artists. In cooperation with public radio stations, a list of the best and an audiobook prize were established. At this point, let me give you a little insight into the topic of production. For high quality productions, you need a professional narrator, a director, and a studio with a sound engineer. But recordings in the artist's home studio, which are later edited by an external technician, can also achieve good quality. Such, such productions are, of course, much cheaper. But now on with the history of German audiobook market. The carrier medium changed again and again. The path leads from the vinyl record via the cassette to the compact disc or the MP3 CD. All these physical editions are mainly sold in bookstores or by mail order. However, the physical market has declined sharply in recent years in favor of the digital market. The German company Audible GmbH was founded in 2004 as a joint venture between Audible Incorporated, a subsidiary of Amazon, and the German publishing groups Holzbrink, Random House, and Lübe. The company offers downloads for sale. In 2009, Audible Incorporation took over the shares of the German partners. In the following years, Audible grew strongly, produced a growing number of audiobooks themselves, and dominated the German digital market for a time. The fact that Audible worked exclusively with Apple's iTunes proved to be a good thing for Audible. But in 2017, there was an antitrust case due to which this ex exclusive cooperation has had to be discontinued. Meanwhile, Audible gets competition from streaming services like Spotify. Streaming is basically a form of landing, while in download, the files are sold. 
That's what we say, download to own. One distinguishes between platforms for music streaming like Spotify and pure audiobook platforms like BookBeat by Bonnier. The revenues from streaming are significantly lower than those from downloads. And these are significantly lower than those from CD sales. This is probably the main reason why Penguin Random House, the world's largest publishing group, has so far refused to stream its audiobooks. However, it must also be noted that young people nowadays generally do not buy CDs or downloads, but stream their audio content. My publishing house will probably generate a bit more than 30% of its turnover with CDs this year, while nearly 70% will be revenues from downloads and streams. And finally, at least in part, the taste of the audience changed with the medium. The genre of crime, fiction, romance, fantasy, and fantasy are very popular digitally. In my experience, lovers of sophisticated literature still like to go to the bookshops to buy a CD. But that may be typical, especially for German listeners. What can be concluded from this? In a market still to be developed for audiobooks, popular bestsellers are important to get a broad audience interested in the medium. The quality of the recordings should be good. The speakers can be famous, but they don't have to be. The general trend is moving away from the physical to the digital audiobook. Anyone entering the audiobook business now should ask themselves whether they want to produce CD at, CDs at all or whether it wouldn't be better to go straight for digital distribution alone. If you do this, you should play on as many platforms as possible. And you should note as, that most of them have Scandinavian or American owners who make their own rules. In any case, the future belongs to the digital market. This is a global trend. Now, I would like to give you a sample calculation for an audiobook production and an example for, of proceeds from a title that has very strong sold in streaming. A book with 240 pages is to be produced as a reading with a running time of nearly 470 minutes or about eight hours. To do this, the text license must first be purchased from the author or his book publisher or an agency. It may also be necessary to obtain the translation rights. Usually we offer a guaranteed amount for the license, which must be paid in advance. Here in this example, this is 3,000 euros. It can, of course, be less or much more. The license is built once a year, whereby we usually pay about 10% of the dealer's sales price of the CDs, and no more than 20 5% of the net proceeds from downloading and streaming. That is what you find here. The license fee is offset against the prepayment. For 470 minutes, you can schedule three studio day days, which cost about 6,600 euros including narr narrator's fee and direction in this example. If you choose a narr narrator with this own home studio, the production is of course much, much cheaper because then only one technician has to do the post 
production of the pre-master and the master. Such a production will cost only about half. Then there are, of course, graphic costs. Here I have calculated well and used 800 euros. If you only publish on the internet, you don't need a print work for the CD edition. That becomes accordingly cheaper. And of course, you will have no press costs as here showed with 600 euros. Yes, and then there are the overhead costs. We actually calculate 10,000 euros per title, although we are a small publishing house with lean structures. That may seem relatively high, but it is realistic. After all, the technical costs, for example, for a database and for license accounting software also belong here. These two items have caused acquisitions and maintenance costs of around 40,000 euros for Audiobuch since 2014. But these expensive expenses, expensive is expenses, have really paid off. I would therefore strongly advise you to take a close look at the subject of metadata and databases. In our example, the total costs amount to almost 21,000. If you choose the cheaper version, you will get there with 17,000. On the side of the proceeds, I have taken an example from practice. I want to show you an audiobook that was extremely successful in streaming. So I took a special thriller which was released in April 2019 and has since developed very well in streaming. But I must, must admit that by no means all titles do so well in streaming. Others are still much stronger in download or even CD sales. In any case, we were able to collect 13,400 euros in just over a year through streaming on music platforms such as Spotify. 5,900 through streaming on pure audiobook platforms such as BookBeat. And 5,400 through download revenues on platforms such as Audible. These are the pure digital revenues. Added to this, the revenue from physical CD sales. All in all, the total revenue amounts to 29,050. The most astonishing thing about this is the unit revenue. They can vary greatly. In this example, they look like the table on the right side. You see it here. You can see that the music platforms pay the lowest prices, namely an average of less than one euro. Nevertheless, it is these streaming services that have generated the most revenue. In second and third place come streaming services for audiobooks only and download providers at somewhat about over two euros per audiobook. Physical distribution scores best here at almost six, six euros. You see it here. But unfortunately, this is not reflected in the results here. Only about 600 CDs were sold. I would like to stress once again that this distribution of proceeds is based on a real example, but does not represent the current normal case. But this is what the future could look like. Perhaps Kurt will be able to say a little bit more about this in his lecture. I would like to close with the following remark. It is often said that publishers earn their money, money 
in their sleep with digital offers. That is nonsense. Digital sales work requires not only a good database, but also constant processing of the digital channels with informations, competitions, free audio samples, or other gifts. The playing of social media portals from Facebook to Instagram requires precise planning. And last but not at least, you need excellent distribution partners like Cipralution, who provide the different platforms with the right metadata and other informations. Thank you. Corinna, thank you. Thank you very much. That was really, really interesting. Uh, we have many comments and questions uh, from the participants. Uh, it was um, an excellent presentation of how it works, a publishing house that produces audiobooks. Um, Corinna, first of all, I would like to read you a question by uh, Prandu Guptara. And he asks, what are the three most common mistakes made by the organizations who try to get into the audiobook market? The three common mistakes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> For example, in my publishing life, uh, in my publishing house, I, um, yeah, I don't would, I, I will not say mistake, but uh, my first audiobook, as you told us, was um, about the ancient Rome. Yeah. Um, so perhaps you start with best-selling authors and, and best-selling titles because um, I think you have to, uh, to uh, improve the market first and, and that is, is, is very important. Um, next, I would say it's a mistake to, uh, to uh, produce too cheap. Um, you have to record with really professional narrators. That is very important. And the third, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that, that are main, that, um, main that's mistakes. Enough. <laughs> Bad two, enough. Two, two mistakes. Two mistakes are enough. And uh, thank you very much. You are so much, uh, you know so much about this. And um, I wanted to ask you something. I was reading uh, about your biography and the, your story with the audiobooks. And um, Corinna, you only publish audiobooks, is that right? Yes, from the beginning. From right the from beginning. the beginning, I uh, was studying in Berlin, coming yeah. from Freiburg. So that's a long way. And uh, I've listened to many audiobooks uh, in, in that time in the 80s, uh, as it was uh, uh, with Mauer and so on, the wall was there. So you had to wait a lot in your car and I had time to to listen to audiobooks. So that's my... Um... Yes, and um, let me ask you something. Um, how do you feel, how different is to be a publisher, a classic publisher of print book than to be an audiobook publisher? I don't know if you, if you can feel a difference or what. I mean, the book is the content, of course, is the story, but audiobook is a, is a different kind of book, of course. It's the medium difference. I think uh, the main difference is um, you have to speak to the book publisher uh, and to the agencies. Um, for example, we now talk about the uh, programs of the book publishers of next year. And um, so uh, there is already a selection of the best and um, you have to make your own choice. Of course. Uh, uh, to what you are going to. So you, you collaborate with publishers and choose uh, of their uh, collection of their catalog of books, right? Yes. Sometimes also um, we uh, make directly um, jobs with authors, 
but um, uh, normally uh, we have the yeah. license from book publishers. In Greece, I don't think there is something like a school for professional narrators. Can you give us some advice uh, to actors and directors who start working on audiobooks? Hmm. Yeah, that's difficult. Um, uh, here in Germany, we have um, radio stations uh, and uh, um, narrators uh, from them. You can take all, uh, we have also these voiceover artists. I don't know whether you have that also in Greece. Yes, perhaps, we do. Perhaps that would be a, a good um, thing to start with them um, because they know how to pronounce and, uh, yeah. and to, to bring it. They, they know all the secrets of the, yeah. of the narration, yes. I just want to hear to say that um, at the National Book Center of Greece, one was still um, a live organization, uh, we had produced a series of uh, children's books uh, as audiobooks, and we offered them to the children and, and to the educational community. And uh, we work with uh, authors from the National Theatre. It was really excellent product. It is, it is still it is, but uh, we have to um, to renew the platform because the technology is very old now. But yes, there are solutions. There are uh, good uh, actors that can do that very well. Uh, well, thank you very much, Corina. Dear Corina, dear, uh, really interesting. And uh, there are more questions, but uh, I think it's about time we go uh, to listen to Kurt and after we'll come back with the questions. Okay.